Hey everyone, welcome to my shop. Thanks for joining me for another patron Q&A where I answer questions submitted by our Patreon supporters. Now if you'd like to support our efforts and have your questions answered right here on the channel, please consider joining our Patreon community. We'll have more information on how you can go about doing so at the end of the video. Right now though, let's get into today's questions. Patron Lawrence Polinski wanted to see a demonstration of a Fox Wedge mortise and tenon. So for this month's video, that's exactly what we're going to do. Now you've seen me cut mortises and make tenons before, so I won't go through this in detail. But I start by just pairing out the mortise with the mortise chisel just to give me a shallow mortise to guide uh, my chopping cuts. Once I have the shallow mortise paired, I can then switch over to the mallet and start chopping the mortise to depth. Uh, and when I do this, I stand in line with this stock so that I can make sure I hold my chisel plumb to the direction of the mortise. Once I have the majority of the mortise cut, I then change positions to stand on the side of the piece so that I can make sure I'm holding the mortise chisel plumb for the end cuts uh, from the opposite direction. And this allows me to make nice square ends to the mortise. Then I can go on to make the tenon. I start that by pairing the shoulders, scribing and pairing the shoulders to give my saw a nice place to start. And then I can go ahead and saw out the shoulders. I start by sawing one of the long shoulders to uh, guide, help guide the saw. And I rotate the cut 90 degrees, rotate the stock 90 degrees between cuts. Then I finish by sawing out the cheeks. All right, so up to this point, it's been just a normal mortise and tenon. The tenon is still square, and the mortise is still square, but they fit together very nice and snug. If this was a regular mortise and tenon or a drawboard mortise and tenon, this would be done. For the fox wedged mortise and tenon, we need to do two more steps, obviously. We need to widen the mortise, and we need to make the wedges. Now, ideally, the wedge stock is going to be about the same thickness as the tenon. And these pieces that you cut off the sides of the tenon, the shoulders actually uh, make decent stock for that if they're, if they're wide enough. Um, I wasn't sure that mine were going to be, so I'm going to use a separate piece of stock to make my wedges. But the other important thing is, besides making wedges, we have to widen the mortise. So here's where we are right now. The line here, obviously, the pencil lines denote the outside edge of our tenon stock. The black dotted line is where our current mortise is, straight down about a quarter inch in from the ends of the stock. For the, for when, when we wedge the mortise and tenon, we want to create the pattern shown by the red dotted lines. Now, we can go outside of the extents of the, um, the pencil lines here, the, the width of the stock. If you wedge the stock enough, you can certainly go outside of those extents, but it's really not necessary. Um, and you take the chance of splitting your stock if you go too wide with your wedges. So, we want to basically go follow this red line with our, our wedges and with our mortise. So we need to open this mortise up. In order to do that, we choose our angle, and then we go ahead and draw that angle on here just as a guide. Now you can actually use your bevel to pair the ends of this mortise at an angle to then go ahead and open up the mortise a little bit to give you room to be able to put those wedges in. To flare the mortise, I re-chop the ends using a bevel to guide the angle. Okay, now to make the wedge, I got a small piece of, of scrap that's about the same uh, width, same thickness as my tenon stock. Um, and it helps, you know, you can cut it down to about the same length as well, or a little bit shorter. 
You can work with an oversized piece and cut it down later, but I find it's just as easy to, to have a piece that's just a, a tiny bit shorter than the, the length of the tenon. That's just to make sure that when you drive this up, the wedge doesn't bottom out and prevent the tenon from seating. So what I did was I took a marking gauge and I set it to a little bit thicker than the, uh, the shoulder thickness there. It's not really that important because you you're always going to plane it down later anyway. So you can make it a little wider. Uh, just don't make it too narrow. Then we took our, I took my bevel, which again is the, uh, the angle of the mortise. And I'm just going to take the bevel and I can transfer that angle onto, uh, onto my wedge. Okay, and that's about the angle that we should be making our wedges. Now, I can try to squeeze two out of that, but I'm not going to because they're so small. I'm just going to try and I'm just going to cut one and get the other one. So, I'll take my saw and I'll stay outside the line. And I'll saw off a little wedge-shaped piece like that. Put this stuff aside. Now what I can do is take a block plane and hold it in my hand and just very carefully run the, the wedge over it to dress that face and also to thin it down a little bit because I might, might need to, to get it a little bit thinner. You gotta be careful doing this uh, if you have cut resistant gloves, you know, you might want to think about using those, but as long as you take a really light cut and you're, you're careful, um, I've been doing this for, for a lot of years and uh, I can't remember ever cutting myself doing it, but if your blade is not sharp, you certainly can. If you have to push or pull that piece of wood too hard over the blade, um, there's a good chance your fingers are going to slip off and catch the blade. So make sure your blade is sharp if you're going to do this so that you don't really have to struggle to get the blade to cut. And you can plane a, a pretty thin wedge. And when we're done, that wedge should look like that. This one needs a little bit more work yet. And it should match the angle that we've drawn on our stock here. So that's really where it should fit. So our mortise is here. I've drawn in a horizontal or a line here to denote the approximate bottom of the mortise. So that's right where our wedge should fit. So to prepare my tenon, I'm just going to make a couple of saw cuts just about all the way to the baseline. And I'm using a really thin curved saw here. I don't want to remove a whole lot of material. And it's not that important if these saw cuts aren't perfectly straight. They're going to be hidden inside the joint anyway. Um, but I tend to draw myself some guidelines anyway. All right, so we're at the moment of truth. Now, the thing with the, the uh, Fox Wedge Tenon is you only get one shot at this. So it's important, as I mentioned earlier, to make sure that your tenon fits well and tight and your shoulders close before you get to this step because um, if it doesn't, there's no going back. You're not gonna get this thing apart to retest it. Once you put those wedges in and start to drive this up, it's your only chance. Uh, I'm just gonna use some yellow glue because I don't have any hide glue prepared. So we'll put a little bit of yellow glue on here. And you're gonna see this real time, if it fits or not. Let's see how this goes. Get my reference faces lined up. Start my wedges. 
You're going to have to move quick so that your wedges don't bind. Get this in there and start to drive this home. Well, what do you know? I'm pretty satisfied with that. Of course, after the glue dries, the real test is when you cut the joint apart. Now, obviously you wouldn't do this on a real piece for a project, but for our test piece, I have gone ahead and done so. And you can see the sides of the tenon are pretty nice and tight up against the side walls of the, the mortise, a little bit of a gap over here, but that's all right because of the shape of the tenon. Once we create that shape, there's no way this thing is going to pull out even if the glue fails. So uh, while maybe not something that you would commonly do on your projects, certainly something fun to experiment with once in a while. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like this video and would like to see more videos like it, please take a minute to click that thumbs up icon, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment below. If you'd like to submit your own questions to be answered here in a future video, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash brfinewoodworking for all the details. Our patrons help us to continue to create quality content like these videos and our bi-weekly audio podcast without subjecting you to annoying sponsorship ads. And as a Patreon supporter, you can submit your own questions to be answered in a future video right here on the channel. So thanks again for watching, and until next time, stay sharp.